Welcome to another weekly episode of Melting Pot. Today, I am in conversation with an amazing French actor. His name is Mehdi no, Nebu. Mehdi Nebu. I, I'm not sure if I got that right. I was trying right. very hard to do the French pronunciation, but I no, think <laughs> I faltered. <I'm good. laughs> Thank you so much, Mehdi, for joining me um, in this conversation on Melting Pot. And I'm sure the way I'm excited, I'm sure my listeners are also going to be super excited to have you share your journey with them. So thank you once again. Thanks to you. <laughs> Great. So Mehdi, I think we need to backtrack uh, a bit because I know you're, you're, I mean, once we talk, start talking about cinema, then there'll be so much to talk about. So just a little background to you from what I understand, your mom is German and your father Algerian. So how was it that um, you ended up being born and living in France? How did that migration happen? Um, to, to be a bit more specific, my mother is half German, half French. Uh, and my father was born in Algeria um, in the 40s. And Algeria, um, as you, you may know, is, um, has been a French colony for I think like 130 years till 1961. And uh, so my father was born in Algeria, but back then he was considered France. So you had a French passport, uh, you could uh, normally uh, travel from Algeria to France without needing a visa. Um, so there was a lot, and there's still a lot of people and second, third, fourth generation of French colonies or ex-French colonies in France. Actually, um, they're probably the, 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 the most foreigners you could uh, find in France are mainly coming from colonies or ex-colonies. So my father met my mother in Algeria in the 60s. So right after uh, Algeria um, won uh, the war, so to speak, uh, against the French uh, army and uh, won uh, its independency back. And there, my mother was working for the uh, NGO, uh, as far as I know, and they were uh, helping children to learn uh, read and write in the southwest of Algeria. And you, you, you must know that Algeria is something like 75% uh, desert the Sahara Desert. Mm -hmm. uh, my father is also within Algeria from a specific place. Like there is a big difference between the north, the coast, and the south, uh, who are mainly people from the desert. And before the colonies uh, in Africa, um, those many, many of these frontiers were not existing. And uh, so there were tribes uh, that were also very free to travel. So you're so, saying that you're saying that there were no borders between the Afri between some of the North African countries. No, no. it was all. I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. not an expert. At yeah, all. no, I know. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not an historian, but as far as I know, the the colonies, the, like the Europeans, I would say the French, the English, Belgium, Holland, mainly uh, divided Africa. You know. Mm. My piece, my piece, my card, my guy, which is terrible, but it's, but without that, I mean, how can you draw frontiers in the middle of the desert? Yeah? yeah, yeah. With no one being able even to make sure this, uh, this is respected. I mean, this is whatsoever. But my father, what I was trying to say is that my father is coming from the desert and feels more like coming from the desert than belonging to any nation. Like he said, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a desert guy. And it could have been uh, Mauritania, Mali, uh, Niger, even Libya or Tunisia or Morocco. I mean, uh, this, this desert is huge. It's like an ocean of sand. Yeah. And um, so I would say nomads. And it's I mean, it's, it's quite different than when you, if you were born on the coast or from a 
fisherman's family or from Algier, which is the, the capital. It's um, when you are from there, it's, it's quite a huge difference. So he's from, from the desert, so like uh, from the southwest of Algeria. And my mother, um, her father comes from um, between Cologne and Dusseldorf. Uh, and he left Germany uh, before the war started. We don't really, really know why. Um, we know that his father was a really uh, difficult man and, 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 and um, kind of a dictator. Uh, and uh, he was the oldest of the family, so he was supposed to take over the company. Um, they, they were quite wealthy, as far as I know. And, but he left with his best friend. He left to France and with no money. And if I start to talk about him and his story, it's going to take hours. <laughs> but he, had, he ended up marrying a French woman who happens to be uh, my grandmother. And they married in 36, so three years before the war started. And they're both kind of intellectuals, you know. She studied uh, 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 for a long time, my grandmother, and back then, like, um, I mean, the kind of, of education she, she went for was quite rare for, unfortunately, for women back then. So in the 20s, I would say she was born 1910. Um, and he also was, you know, well-educated um, uh, ex rich kid family mm. and but did for some reason did some hippie trip back in the 30s like they married and then they went on the countryside and started to you know uh, have land and pigs and you know and like so they had it was an interesting background uh, in a way because they were uh cultivated my mother could had had all the shakespeare plays at home and she could read italian poetry and they were really educated, but they had the life of, of, uh, of uh, farmers. So it was an interesting mix. Uh, unfortunately, he died two years before I was born, so I never met him. He was their love story. And then came the war. And then when the war came, my grandfather had, had to hide the fact that he was from Germany because he was in France, yeah. but coming from the country of the enemy. Yeah. So... But the first years of the year, of the of the war, anyhow, uh, he had to anyway. He had, he had to hide it. But also, when uh, France has been invaded by the Germans, in, he had to hide it even more. I guess. I mean, he was. If he would have been taken by the French resistance, they would have considered him being a potential, um, I would say, uh, spy. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and if he, if he would have get caught by the German uh, army, uh, he would have it probably be considered as a traitor. So he had to have, it was, it was a difficult time for, for both of them, but it brought my grandmother and my grandfather tighter together. And the love story is very passionate. It's a little bit like Gone with the Wind, but <laughs> during World War II, <laughs> I mean, that's, how, that's how we consider it from the family point of view. Right. Uh, yeah, then he got, he got arrested by the French resistance in, I think in 42 or three. And then he was in jail in Paris. And back then in jail, you didn't know if at 6 a.m. they would wake you up and bring you in the backyards and, you know, and, and execute you. So it, were, it was not just two years in jail, it was just, you know, every day, every week, not knowing uh, will he ever come back. Mm -hmm. And we also, my mother has a lot of letters, all the letters that they both exchanged during that time. Very old school, like, you know, like Madame and Monsieur and, you know, talking to each other. <laughs> like, so how, how old was your mom when uh, your grandfather was in jail? Oh, she was uh, minus uh, two or three months. Like my grandmother was pregnant of her. Oh, okay. And, and, and my, uh, when um, my grandmother gave birth to my mother, her father was in jail. 
and she gave her baby, it was her third baby, not the first one, to her own mother, so to my grand-grandmother, and took a jewelry and everything that, that she could sell, sold it to get a bit of money and pay some, pay some lawyers, moved to Paris to her own sister, and from there did all she could to free her husband. But as far as I know, the first two years of my mother's life were with uh, her own grandmother and not with her mother. Yeah, yeah. And I think the first time, when they came back, when the war was over and parents came back um, and my mother basically like, understood that her grandmother was not her mother, but her mother was her mother and she was two or something, two years old. Mm. So that's more or less the story. And then my, my mom, when she was, I don't know, 19 or something, um, 62, so 750, that's uh, six years for 50 plus 12, oh my God, yeah, she was 19. She was 19 when she decided to, I think she wanted to run away a little bit from her parents. Uh, and uh, discover a bit the world. So she worked for this uh, an NGO back then in the 60s and went to this ex colony to make herself useful. And my father was doing the same thing, but from his in his country, yeah. was helping the kids, the children to learn to read and write. And voila. The, <laughs> So it enough. seems like it seems like um, your grandparents that generation had this mega love story and then it kind of filtered to your parents as well so it's it's yeah. quite yeah it's quite interesting um, to see the kind of influences that um, you know that may have filtered from from that generation to the next generation so that's that's quite quite interesting so that's how they ended up in paris and that's where you were born um no i, I wasn't born in paris actually oh. i was born in the southwest of france okay is, you could say it's the french california more or less uh, it's um it's in the basque country French yeah. one, it's, it's very close to the Spanish border. It's I like 40, yeah. 40 yeah. German. Yeah. I was born there. Okay. Um, but, well, if you talk about generations, um, I think it's quite a classic that um, things and families uh, um, traveling through generations, like the, 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 the cycle of repetition. Certain are positive ones, some other are negative ones, but um, there is, for many reasons that I don't want to get, but you can call it um, genetic memory, you can call it whatever, I don't know. It's like, um, so there is, there is definitely repetition. It's like my grandmother married uh, the so-called so enemy, uh, of France in the late 30s and then had to go through this war, had to fight for, uh, to legitimate this choice from the very first beginning because she's Catholic and he, and he was Protestant, but also because he was German. And the, uh, when we talk 30s, there have been already two war, like yeah. 1870 and uh, First World War. So the French and the German, they didn't like each other and the German were considered, you know, the enemy. And there was this piece of, you know, this region, Alsace-Lorraine, and was you know, on, on, on a certain war, the, it was belonging to France and then the German took it back and then the French took it back, etc. So it was, there was a, a definite um, uh, aversion uh, between these two people uh, back then, and she married that. So, they, so from a religious point of view and from the country, it was the enemy. What did my mother? She married an Algerian. Um, what? When did she, when did they marry? One year after the war, Algerian war. So that this repetition is is an obvious one. They both well, from one generation to another, mother to daughter, war, married. Yeah. 
Yeah. The, the, the so-called enemy of their own country. Yeah, yeah. But th that's for me the main um, re repetition that I see. Uh, because from, for the rest, it's a completely different love story. Like my grandparents, they stayed together till the end, um, till their death. Uh, if that's an end, we don't really know. <laughs> it's another topic. <laughs> But, <laughs> but my, my parents, they stayed 15 years together, late 60s, uh, um, 60s and, and 70s, complete different year, hippie time. Um, and, and my father had to deal with uh, a lot of racism and, uh, and, 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 and a struggle to have... Uh, recognition and uh, respect and to feel respected and, uh, and wanted and uh, yeah because not only racism was and is uh, in too many places in the world still a, an issue but back then he, they were not he was not only coming from Africa who were they were considered as indigenous and I mean as, as half human but he was coming from a country that uh, France was in war against for, I would say, six to eight years. And not only that, but this colony basically kicked the ass of the French army out. Yeah. So there was, there was hate, there was resentment, there was, uh, there was um, also kind of shame, you know, La Grande Nation, you know, France. So when he went to France with my mother, when she was pregnant of um, my oldest brother, and she wanted to, to get the baby there, to have the baby there, um, big, 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 big struggle for him. Um, and like I said, it lasted 15 years. When I was nine, my parents divorced. So, so I see this parallel of, of marrying the enemy, but yeah. the story in itself, very different. Different, yeah. And also, I think it's it's situations, right? Circum circumstances, it's um, those times versus the current times. It's it, There's a lot of factors which could have, uh, can always result in situations being different, you know, in terms of you mentioning that um, your grandparents lived together till they passed on, whereas your dad and mom divorced. So, I mean, I think it, that's that's different. But what's interesting is the fact that they were, um, both these relationships happened um, around war. And both these relationships happened with, um, you know, people like the two people were on opposite sides, so to speak. So I think that's, yeah, that's that's what really is the binding factor. And yeah, it's quite fascinating. I mean, and for you, you mentioned before we started recording that um, you also are, um, you've always been wanting to write and, uh, and you are now doing it. So that this, I think, would also be a very interesting uh, journey to, um, to actually script and put together from two different um, generations and how, there, there are similarities and at the same time dissimilarities in their lives. So I think that would be something very interesting. I don't know what you're writing about, so we won't get into that. But <laughs> so <laughs> let's talk about cinema. How did that happen? I mean, at what stage in your life did you... Um, start to think and believe that this is what you really want to do? Did it happen organically or is it something that, um, you know, that fell into your lap? Is it something that you were so passionate about always and determined to do? So how, how did it actually come together? Uh, I think uh, that the first time I was sitting in front of a black and white television back then. Uh, yeah, an instant fascination started and, and for, for, for many people, I guess, you know, this, this, this magic, moving, oh, yeah. yeah, this magic, moving pictures, these stories, this 
people who talk to you. I mean, uh, I mean, what's the next level of radio somehow? Um, even though it's a different thing, but it was like, what? We can see them now and I'll not only hear them. Um, there were also some things like, like some children program. So it became very fascinating. I, maybe you could compare it with, a, with, with the tablets today or computers or, or, or phones, I don't know, for the kids. But that's that was the that was the television was the the smartphones of, of, of my generation. <laughs> yeah. And and uh, uh, yeah. And then when color came, it was like what? <laughs> you know, color television. And I remember that we um, we couldn't watch TV um, when we wanted. It was very. Uh, restrictive uh, and of course not things that were too too much for adults no violence and and thing like that so i i, I don't know I, I mean you know memory is a, is a funny thing because but the feeling memory changed changes every year like sometimes what i remember i'm not sure if it's true or if it's a combination of different tr truths from different periods of my life or if a part of it is completely made up. <laughs> so don't believe a word I'm going to say because I'm not sure it's really true. But, uh, and then of course, so I also ask what is truth? <laughs> if you want to go into metaphysical topics. But um, I, think I, liked, I think that the first movies that uh, I was allowed to watch were uh, Fellini movies. Okay. Uh, mainly Italian cinema I was very present in a, in a in France and French cinema too. Um, so, but the, the intellectual ones, I was too little, but Fellini, I could watch and still enjoy. Even if I probably didn't understand a lot of things, it was still accessible for, for my children um, um, perception. Uh, and also this very voluptuous woman uh, and with very generous bodies, uh, created my first, um, uh, like almost um, uh, sensual, uh, I mean, con connection with sensuality and desire. And, uh, and um, because they were very like maternal, like mother, but at the same time, they were not your mother. So you were allowed to have different uh, to, to, to the projections and desires in them. And Fellini, you know, Fellini, Fellini, Fellini was, um, and he's still for me, uh, yeah. An enigma. More no, than, no, yeah. I don't know if that's the word, that's probably not the word I would have chosen, enigma, it's more, it's like you would touch different levels of perception, like mm -hmm. there's a moment that looks, and I, I, I love those artists, I mean, Chaplin also, uh, has that when you I think I think it's a very high level of um, art call it art call it communication or sharing when when it's very simple it appears to be simple it's very accessible uh, so accessible that a huge range of, of, of people from from five to to 95 years old can you know, can uh, connect to it, but it has behind, under, over this simplicity, maybe simplicity, what I'm saying, okay. um, uh, uh, um, um, different laser, layers of, of, of and depths that uh, you, depending who you are, where you are in your life, how old you are, uh, you can also uh, connect to behind this simplicity. And I think in music too, or in lyrics, or in this, and, and I think Fellini has definitely that. Like, uh, it's, um, it's, it, it looks like accessible. If you think about La Strada, yeah? uh, it's, you know, these two bohemians, she's a clown and he's this guy who breaks chains, you know, in public or plays with fire. And he uses her as her assistant and he's really very, tough with her and, 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 and 
it's I mean, depending how old you are, when you when you discover this kind of movie, you see different things, different yeah. depths. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that things that 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 that's for me one of the yeah quality of uh, of uh, Federico Fellini and and his dreams, for example, the dreams. In, uh, I've read later on when I was a bit older that um, he was very fond of um, uh, um, uh, oh, wait a minute of uh, uh, Jung, uh, Carl Gustav Jung, uh, uh, who was a student, as far as I know, from Freud, but then completely brought something new uh, in, in psychology and philosophy and. So Fellini, as far as I know, was really fond of him. <clears throat> and, uh, and the dreams, the sequences in Fellini movies are like, basically very much inspired by a very deep uh, approach and anal analyze of dreams. And I mean, when you have a guy, for example, I, I don't remember which movie it was. I think it was black and white. Now, he's in a symmetry and the symmetries in Italy are quite different like that. They look like um, like yeah. huge, yes, and furniture and, yeah. and candles yeah. everywhere. You have this guy walking through this symmetry that looked like a labyrinth, and he's yelling, "Mama, Mama!" You know, he's, he's he's in a symmetry that looks like a labyrinth, like there's no exit, and he's calling for his mom. For a child, it could be like funny, strange, weird. But there is many layers, you know, yeah. mom, is the burst, you know, the, you come from her, symmetry is, is uh, very much uh, yeah. associated with death. Yeah. This guy who's a grown up man, still behave like a child, he, he, he's looking for his mom. Then in, at the end of, of a corridor uh, in the symmetry, is, I think he sees his mom, but when he approaches, she's gone again. Like, where well, you, you can't really put it in word, but... So then, mind, yeah, simplicity, they are co yeah. very complex mind. Yeah. yeah, and leaves it to you um, at whatever stage of life you are in or whatever frame of mind you are in when you're watching the film. Yes. I guess leaves it to you um, and your imagination. So I think yeah. that... And your interpretation. And interpretation, and your, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. perceptions. Yeah. And I think that's a, that's a very... Uh, high level of communication as an artist, as a writer, as a as a songwriter, as a musician. When you when uh, when you communicate, share things that uh, trigger different things in you, depending, as you just said, uh, on your of your age and perception. It's uh, yeah. So yeah. Well, it's, and I so think. That, and I so think that was really your introduction to cinema, and that's when that you was saw... Fellini. Yeah, yeah. I was Fellini, and with the advantage that I loved him when I was uh, I don't know seven or eight. Wow! And I loved growing and re and watch his movies again and, and rediscover uh, right. those secrets. But to be honest with you, what made me want to become an actor, uh, I would say one a specific actor called Jean-Paul Belmondo. Yes. That, that we were admiring a lot, especially with the brother over me, like just a year and a half, no, two years older than me, who is now a director, by the way. <laughs> and we're the, we're the two ones in, in, in five brothers, we're the two ones that are, so to speak, uh, working in some- Creative. Some artistic fields, you could yeah. say. Yeah, yeah. And we would even fight for who had the right to imitate uh, Jean-Paul Belmondo. But I think actually that my, did my older brother played a huge role in, in my choices in life because the fact that he was loving Jean-Paul Belmondo made me love Jean-Paul Belmondo even more. The fact that we, you know, who imitates him the best was also because I was challenging so I think part of, of a compet competition, competitivity, I don't know if you call it in English, between my older brother and me triggered a lot of my choices. And uh, he then, when he was 14, started to do theater 
and from the neighborhood, he would he created a group of children that were, let's say, between six and eleven or something. But he was still the oldest. He was still already a teenager, and they were still kids. And he was doing theater with them and giving them lessons and, and doing plays. And he ended up in the in the in the newspaper of this little town, Bayonne, with his picture. You know, a fourteen years old boy uh, is doing theater with kids, and so one sign of me being younger was wow you know my brother you know he did it you know wow that's crazy and i think there was envy too maybe or at least and then later on but not that late he went to paris when he was 18 and did some she jobs like you know at the entrance of the theater the guys who verify the tickets you know yeah, yeah. euro is here euro is there and then uh, you know from he, he, he worked his way up uh, to then become assistant of a, a theater director, etc. And then he became an actor, theater actor. And then I saw my brother on stage. So all his past was showing me it's possible. Yeah. Because my parents, especially my father, was like, no, 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 this is not a job. Acting or music, this is not a job. This is, this is hippie shit. This is, forget it. You have to be an engineer. You have to be a doctor. You know, he was coming from this generation. So I had this um, sound of bell, boom, from the daddy's side. And my mother was a bit more hippie, so she was more, you know, the most important is that, that for you to be happy, whatever job you do. And, uh, but my brother, I think probably without him, I may have ended up doing completely something else, I guess. I'm not even sure he's aware of that. <laughs> like, like, now he like will he, be. Now he will be when he listens yeah. to this conversation. Yeah, yeah he's not very good in, in English. <laughs> I can say whatever I want. Oh, he could ask his girlfriend. She speaks perfect English. But uh, yeah, yeah. But for some reason, for some karmic reason, uh, I ended up having an older brother who had a very clear path. Yeah. And uh, you, you know when when. Uh, when you're behind a truck on the highway, there's a specific wind behind the truck that if you place your car behind it, you would go faster. I mean, yeah. unfortunately, a truck is never faster than a car. <laughs> but there, there is this, this physical reaction that there's a phenomenon, the phenomenon of, of attraction behind. Well, my brother's the truck, I'm the car behind. And uh, <laughs> that's, that's how it started. That's really how it started. And then we went different paths because I went to study directing in, in Berlin, Germany. And he uh, was a professional theater actor. And by coincidence, I became an actor and he became a director. Right. But I, have no, I have no education in acting, like it's just, just learning by doing and, and same for him as a director. So there's some crossover and uh, I don't think he's thinking of acting again. But I'm thinking of directing finally. Wow. So we'll see. Nice. Yeah. So I yeah. think, yeah, I mean. So Jean Paul Belmondo and my brother are, and, are guilty uh, <laughs> for my choices. <laughs> I <laughs> get two inspiration, yeah. are the two inspirations in your life. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, as, as a kid, as a kid, definitely. Yeah. So as, um, I mean, you speak how many? Five languages, six languages? I would say five. Uh, I, I am. I'm, uh, my ex-girlfriend is from from Mexico, and thanks to her, of um, uh, yeah, my Spanish uh, getting, has, has improved. <laughs> okay. Uh, but the one and I really love it and discovered uh, uh, America Latina last year. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm really wanted to discover more and also this language, but my Italian helped because I speak French, Italian, English and German and a little bit of Arabic, but very little, unfortunately, uh, in Spanish now. In Spanish now. So uh, do you think it's an advantage? Because I've, I've seen that you have this huge body of work, which is in... I mean, okay, mainly French and English, but I think you've done other European uh, language films. So you think that 
uh, speaking so many different languages has given you the advantage of being able to do cross, um, not cultural, but like literally uh, be a part of the different, um, different cinema opportunities, so to speak. Um, has that kind of been an advantage for you? Oh yes, I like to think so. Uh, when uh, in the 80s, not many French people would speak English or foreign languages. Uh, it took a while till, uh, took like, I think two generations. Now there's always more people speaking uh, English, for example, in France, but it came much later than in Germany, for example. But I know that uh, when I started to work as an actor, which was um, 2000, was the first movie, 21 years ago, uh, there, were not, um, there were not that much people speaking so many languages in, at least in, in as, as far as I know, uh, in, in, the, in the acting business. Uh, and then uh, it's, it's like a, a new field of possibility uh, uh, or a new market, you would say, uh, from a businessman point of view, uh, became the European actors. Uh, I would say from 2000, uh, earlier so 2010 maybe, or late, late, between 2005 and 2010, I don't remember exactly. And then you saw, you, you, you saw always more actors from different European countries that uh, uh, started to work abroad. I think of Mats Mikkelsen from Denmark. Uh, I think of Daniel Brühl from Germany uh, and so on. So basically, probably, probably also has to do with the series and, uh, and internet so that you could easily, for example, tape yourself, like do a casting, film yourself home and send it to Singapore, to Brazil, to wherever. Um, so, of course, uh, first skill that was uh, expected was you to speak uh, the language uh, that was needed for the series or the movie. But as we know, English uh, is, 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 uh, is universal. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's quite universal. It's a huge yeah. market. It's a huge market, and, yeah. And so, so is, actually, so is Spanish, because yes, I'm absolutely. in Latin America and even huge. in Spain, it's huge. So huge. Have, you, have you had an opportunity? Because I, I haven't seen anything while I was researching. What is Spanish? Yeah. Not ever. No, it's too, it's too recent. It's too recent, and I don't think I would be able to, you know, uh, make a, a proper, I mean, one scene uh, with a coach and, you know, or two, but a lead or, or a supporting part in the Spanish language. I'm not ready for that. Yeah, but I, never, I, I need more work. Yeah, so never say never, because yeah. I'm sure it can happen. So um, out of all the... Uh, you know, the different, because I've seen that you've done comedy, you've done all different kinds of cinema. What would you consider to be your most favorite genre? What is it that you really, really um, enjoy the most out of all? What I, enjoy, what, what I enjoy the most is black comedy. Black comedy, okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, think of uh, the Coen Brothers, kind of cinema or who does that? I mean, British, British comedy. So have you done, have you done any black comedy? Yes, a few. I would wish to do more. <laughs> but um, uh, once it's called The Last Word, it's a Netflix series. Okay, it's in, uh, it's in French or in it's, English? It's a German series. German, okay. Yeah. So the I Last should, Word, I, that's I, Let's I, watch. Um, um, there's also a short, um, short program, comedy short program that we were doing for a few years that was released on Arte, that was called Man Frau, so you would say man and woman. Okay. I was playing a freak. Um, like a cousin of uh, of Borat, you could say, of <laughs> Sasha Baron Cohen. 
<laughs> probably a, a, a French German cousin uh, from Borat. Um, what else? Um, Well, not, 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 not enough, definitely. Other, others would be comedies, but so-called black comedies, like tragic comedy or where it's funny, but not only uh, where it's funny, but it can also be unpleasant or pro provocative yeah. or po politically non-correct are the things I feel uh, the most at ease and, 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 and happy. Uh, yeah, but even if it sounds completely obvious what I'm going to say, uh, a good story is a good story and that those are the pearls. It's like a good book or a good play, a uh, theater stage play. Um, and, uh, and I think that writing is the most difficult part in our profession. So, so it's not, you don't have such, I mean, such... You don't have so many, uh, um, yeah, work of art, piece of art, like masterpieces in, in writing, in in uh, in series and in uh, in uh, in films. In series, more like when series started uh, with Six Feet Under and uh, you know um, the Sopranos and yeah, that's when that's when the writing was like wow, guys, now it's not. The, the you know power to the writers you know finally yeah and, and the level of quality just went up and up and up and up till now where you still have because there's one factor that i think is uh, unbeatable when you do a series is that you spend so much time with the characters with the humans with with their life that your relationship with them as as, as a viewer uh, as an audience uh, is, is, is closer to the one uh, with a character in a big novel uh, the, and, and, and you spend this person's, this character, they become intimate. You, you, you really, you, you have a deeper, complexer uh, relationship than, a, than in a, a 90 minutes movie. So that won't change this, this depth, this, this length, this, this possibility of complexity. Uh, that you yeah, because write. yeah, because you're able to you have the luxury of time, whereas yes. in a ninety minute or you know a feature, yeah. You, you, yeah. you have to try and compress all yes. of it. Yeah, so no, it makes complete sense. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You, but I think yeah. I think just to end up what what I think we're going through now with the with the with the series, you know, uh, uh, it, it feels like. Uh, uh, becomes always more and more and more, and sometimes at the cost of quality, quantity replacing quality, and um, you feel because it's working, because it, people loves it, because it's becoming the opium of the people too, uh, you know, to because it's there's a, it's it's it's, an, it's clearly a, a, a world addiction now series, and that starts from a very young age. Yeah. Um, I don't know how you could you call that over industrialization, like you know what happened with meat and, and things like that when when the, the when greed and uh, um, started to take over and and now overproducing um, compromises on quality compromises yeah, yeah. quality yeah. also yeah. And, and also the length and the time and the speed things ha have to be done. Yeah, uh, you know, it has to be efficient. Uh, I feel like we have less weeks, less days to shoot. The days are longer. Uh, preparation is shorter, less money. You know, first it was, you know, Alice in Wonderland in the serial, series world after, yeah. Yeah. I mean, in, in the 21st century. Yeah. Uh, and now it became like a... Quick, yeah. quick, 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 down, 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 next. Quick, 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 down, 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 next. And yeah, so more commercial. It's it's sort of commercialized um, a lot more. Yeah, no, I completely yeah. understand that. Yeah, and from the but point of view of an actor. Yeah, and, and I guess that's um, your point of view as an actor, you know, because you are you are a part of that whole um, whole new 
um, industry, so to speak. So yeah, I mean, that's coming from, from you. Um, Ridley Scott, you have done, um, is it just one film? And I think you're in, you're, you're in kind of, um, in, in shooting right now. You're shooting right now. Okay. Yes. So I just wanted to ask you very quickly what that experience has been for you, um, being, you know, in, in a, a, a sort of working with Ridley Scott. That's one. And secondly, um, a little sort of delicate, um, because I know that um, as, um, as a um, non-Caucasian actor, um, do you feel, because of your looks maybe, do you feel like you get typecast in when it comes to Hollywood? Because whatever I've seen you do as of now, um, you've always played a Middle Eastern person. Um, is that something that you, I mean, how, how do you feel about that? So, so, I mean, they're two separate things. One is you uh, working with Ridley Scott and your experience yeah. with that. And the second is in terms of being typecast as, as a Middle Eastern in Hollywood. Um, what do you feel about that? Well, I'll start with Ridley. Ridley Scott to work, to have the um, incredible uh, luck um, to work with him, um, I mean, I, I feel I feel a lot of gratitude, and I feel super lucky. And <clears throat> I mean, sometimes I, I can't I can't believe it. Just can't believe it that I'm working with with artists like him that I've been admiring since my younger age, especially being not a non-American actor. And um, so there's different experiences. The experience now is a new one again. Uh, the, the first one was uh, incredible. Uh, also because of my character, I had a very emotional scene crying and, and, and had a, I, was, I was felt very uh, um, motivated because it was during the the Gulf War, uh, Bush was uh, was the Bush government, the, the son. And uh, back then there was a lot. We we're talking two thousand eight uh, or seven or eight. Uh, there was a lot of cliches going on uh, regarding uh, the Muslims, the Arabs, and uh, and a lot of. Misinformation and 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 we would hear from Europe here that in the states um, the image of the Muslims were was really darkened by the media, uh, you know, like kind of propaganda, which we know in both sides or everywhere else too. But so it, so when I saw that. Uh, Ridley Scott gave me this part of a guy who was an ex-spy under Saddam Hussein. And then when the regime uh, was over and uh, extremism took over, like Salafist and then Al-Qaeda uh, took over, uh, then um, he just ended up being part of this, you know, and, 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 and without almost you know, uh, double thinking it or analyzing it if this guy found himself being part of this. And then the day they asked him to, you know, uh, make suicide bombing, that is when he realized, what am I doing here? What am I doing here? Uh, I'm, 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 no, I don't want to die, etc. So it, it was about redemption. It was about giving humanity. It was about telling, you know, you, everybody does mistakes uh, in life. You can do mistake, but it uh, doesn't mean you're not a human being anymore. Uh, or, and, and it doesn't mean you, you, you can't have a second chance. 
So I felt really um, uh, extremely motivated, like saying, okay, it's a little part. I mean, it's one scene with Leonardo DiCaprio, so you're, you're just happy, you know, to... to <laughs> To, have to, that. Play to yeah. play tennis with Leo, so to speak, <laughs> in front of a camera, and uh, and uh, um, but also I felt like th there is there is something that is really important here because uh, uh, I don't know how many millions of people and how many uh, U.S. citizens will watch this movie because it's an action movie with DiCaprio and Russell Crowe, so probably a lot of people uh, worldwide. Wow, if I can make it to give some humanity, you know, and to, to this guy. So that was really my motivation. And because uh, actually I cast it for the part that Mark Strong did, which was the third lead, which was the, yeah. the boss of the, of the uh, Jordanian, Jordanian secret services, that would have completely changed my career, <laughs> by, <laughs> by the way. But uh, he liked it, my, my casting, but I was too young to play this guy for him because he said, I need some kind of a father figure toward Leo. You're too close to Leo uh, age-wise. And, uh, but I like what you did, so I want to give you a smaller part. So, um, and, uh, and then, well, even if it was a small part, I was really thrilled to work and meet DiCaprio, but also to have this little window of, of, of giving humanity um, to Muslims, to extremism, to a man who got, got lost, it took the wrong road. Uh, uh, but he's not a demon, he's not, uh, I mean, he's a human being, bring humanity. And I also think that Ridley liked it that, liked it uh, because basically when, when you meet someone, uh, it may influence and create prejudices or influence your perception of this person, you know, the first impression, so-called first impression. His first impression of me was me crying, I mean, in a video for the casting, uh, or at least the second casting, uh, um, and begging for <coughs> redemption. So when I met him on set, he was really nice to me, like, 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 like an uncle who knew, uh, uh, who had see, already seen me crying, for example. And not many people in my friend or in, in work relationship have seen me crying or you don't see often everyone in, in vulnerable situations. It did. So I got the feeling that it made, it made him, um, uh, put it, it put him in a, in a position of, you know, uh, of knowing a side of me that, you know, that you normally show only in your intimate life. So I felt, oh, for some reason, I don't know, I felt he really, he was really nice to me, like, hey, and, and uh, he made me a little bit, um, he embarrassed me a little bit when he introduced me to, to DiCaprio, I must say. Why is that? But, but I am sure that he did it on purpose, because he knew <laughs> we had a scene on that day of uh, rivalry, and, and, you know, he's a CIA guy, and I'm supposed to be a terrorist, or an, or an ex-terrorist, I want to get out of it. Uh, um, so not that easy to not be judgmental <laughs> to each other, uh, and and as a good director, a good director um, know about manipulation. I mean, and the the more subtle, the better. Especially it's if it's for the scene, for the characters, for the for the film. And uh, Leo was sitting there with a cap, uh, uh, so you couldn't see his face uh, uh, at first sight. And he said, oh, let me introduce you to Leo. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to shake hand with DiCaprio. Yeah? So very, uh, I was, yeah, I would say a bit shy, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit like uh, <clears throat> pretending I'm cool, but I wasn't that cool. You inside. Had, fan, and then, had a fan moment there. <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and, 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 um, and then uh, <laughs> Ridley, who say, hey, Leo, I have to introduce you to Mehdi. You know, this guy is a loose cannon, or something like that, uh, or a loose bomb, I don't remember. You know, he can, he can, he can cry and get, and get, get he can go from crying and, and getting pissed off like that. <laughs> no, no, Ridley, no, please. You did enough to say that. <laughs> and I see Leo, who look at me like a, a potential, you know, uh, fighter like a, a potential enemy like and he says hi leo 
And I'm like, fuck. And I was looking, I wanted to say, hey, really, it's embarrassing to introduce me like that. But the word embarrassing was not coming. I was like, what's the word? What's the word? What's the word? And the word didn't come. And okay, thanks, thanks you later uh, in the scene. And then uh, everyone goes wherever. And then I'm walking away from the scene. I'm like, embarrassing. That's the word I was looking for. Embarrassing. <laughs> that is fucking embarrassing <laughs> to, to introduce me to DiCaprio like that. And, and, and then when we were in the scene, there was a strange atmosphere in this car when, when Leo came inside and I felt electricity. I felt because basically he triggered egos here. Like, you know, and we know actors have egos, <laughs> big ones. And, and this need of being, you know, impress you or being intense, being real, being authentic. And, and, and um, so, of course, I was quite intimidated by the idea of acting with DiCaprio. But when you're in the scene, uh, hoping for, you know, you know, going to character and being in character. So it's not DiCaprio and it's not Medi, it's... Uh, it's a CIA agent talking to me who is in a really shit situation if CIA doesn't help, does, if they don't help me. Um, but in the end, I think that Ridley knew exactly what he was doing. <laughs> <laughs> he created a tension, he, you know, and also I think, you know, when you've done so much, when you've shot so much and you've worked with so many incredible talent, actors and actresses and artists, DPs and sound. And I mean, when you read Les Scott, every people working around are just brilliant. They are just, I mean, everyone. And also Shanti, the, the costume designer. And also he has a family that really works with, with him over the years. Um, then, then, you know, you know how to work with actors because you've worked with a lot of and and some amazing ones and and um, so I think he did it on purpose to to. Uh, but I feel that great bribery. Uh, yeah, but no, I think that the fact that you in your world you are such a well-known actor, and it's it's modesty where, you know, you, um, you still acknowledge the fact that some, an actor like, um, like, uh, um, you know, I mean, a director like Ridley Scott or an actor like the one that you, you were, you were doing the scene with, um, you, you felt that fan moment. I think that's quite incredible. And it speaks volumes about you as a person as well, because you, you know, you, you in your own standing um, and in your, in your world of cinema, you are a very big name as well. So. Um, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, thank you for saying that. And I'm trying to uh, em embrace uh your perception, but uh, it always looked different from inside, you know, and, and uh, um, I think that I've inherited the minority complex from my father. That became a great uh, power to him because that's really made him want to, you know, have a, a good job and, and, you know, and be respected and things like that. So I think that I have that and my brothers too, which that made us ambitious. But in the same time, ironically, uh, it gave me this ambition and this, you know, I want, you know, I want to achieve my dreams. I want to, you know, I want my dreams to come true. And in the same time, uh, feeling a little bit less than others. It's, it's, it's getting better right now, but I think that uh, it's part of, of it. Like, and I also think that I could have had, I, I had a few opportunities in my life uh, where I could have, um, um, you know, make some bigger project and have a different career. I mean, like, like something really like, like huge. And I kind of sabotage myself. So, so it's it's like it's like a there's there's a fighter uh, who uh, who believes, but there's also in me. But there's also a child saying, "No, no, 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 it's, you're not gonna make it. No, 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 it's not for you. Oh, no, 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 you're not you're not that good of an actor. Oh, no, 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 no. 
okay, of course, so sad. then of course, you know, that's where doing this kind of job sooner or later make you face certain things uh, um, and, and therapy help or certain works on yourself. But I think it's also very much, it's, it's, it could be modesty. Yeah, you could call it modesty, but it's also a kind of a minority complex. That, that is, thank God for the past, I would say seven years is, you know, uh, disappearing always more and just being grateful for my chance. And, but it starts with, with, I mean, I think the deepest feeling of gratefulness that I know uh, for, uh, are, not, are not linked to my profession, but like, for example, to be grateful of being alive, yeah. for example, and then uh, healthy. And then number three, to have my daughter. I mean, to to have I, I don't own her, but to to, to you know to, to be her dad, uh, um, and her to be healthy. And the same for family, friends. You know, the, the circle being larger and larger. But I I do think that I should be more thankful, also. Uh, in the same time for my luck. I mean, how lucky I am. And even working with Ridley Scott as an actor, to make a living as an artist is already such a luck. Painter, sculptor, photographer. And I wish every young man and woman who may listen to what we're talking about right now, uh, it's possible. It's possible to make a living as an artist. Uh, go for it, try. Especially if you feel you have something to give to the world, to share, and it can be as simple and 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 the more authentic, the better. It doesn't have to be about impressing others or, or being unique or special because we are all unique and special. But you know, tell your story, your your real story. If nowadays you can even make a movie with with a phone, uh, writing, uh, and if 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 possible. Uh, you know, a story is, 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 doesn't request money or a lot of money. And uh, um, even photography now is accessible with, with, uh, with, with, with your phone if, uh, for a start. So this is, um, and when you then happen to be able to make a living of it, wow. And that's, that's uh, yeah, that's, that's probably the first line on, 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 of gratitude that I have toward my life is uh, after being alive, healthy, and everybody else I love um, is uh, the, the chance of, uh, of earning my life, of being paid in this system, you know, in this system where money... And, and being paid uh, with, by doing something that you love. Um, I think that, yeah. yeah, that you can't have it any better than that. So no, no absolutely, no. yeah, no, I, I completely understand that uh, point of view. And I'm happy to hear that, like you mentioned in the past seven years, you've kind of uh, grown, you're growing out of this complex um, that, yes. you know, this minority complex that you've had. And I guess it's. I didn't know I had actually. So it's first you start to realize you have it, and then you can start. <laughs> then you will accepting <laughs> that that's how it is, and it doesn't make you a worse human being. No, absolutely and, not. Yeah, I mean, in fact, if you are able to introspect, or whether it's external people who brought it to your attention, or you've worked it out um, yourself, as long as you know what it is, and you're able to to help change it or improve it or start to think differently i think that's that's uh, more important than anything else so no that's that's amazing i'm like my god we've just been this it's just been a seamless conversation and i'm i'm absolutely enjoying it and i can see that you're wide awake now <laughs> yeah i didn't sleep much yeah i, I wanted I, to ask I wrote you your I know, I just wanted to ask you about, uh, because my Indian listeners, I'm sure, uh, will be really, really... Yeah, Sri Devi. Yeah, curious Aww. to know about English 
Winglish and how that came about. And yes, I mean, Sri Devi, it's unfortunate. Um, and the entire nation mourned, uh, and I think continues to mourn uh, with uh, her untimely death. But I think um, I, I'd rather sort of talk about uh, your experience, or rather have you talk about your experience with the film, how it came about, and what was your experience with, because that's a completely different um, a different segment of cinema. You know, it's not European, it's not Hollywood. Um, it's very, very different. The working, the, you know, the whole thing, the entire concept. So what was that experience like? Um, I would say pretty close to a fairy tale, I would say, uh, as an experience to me as a French, call it European actor, to end up shooting in New York with Sri Devi in a beautiful movie with an amazing director that I love, a close friend and, and her husband who produced it in Balki was also an amazing director that I love. And, uh, and all the people that I've met to this uh, journey, uh, Adil Hussein, who's now a close friend and I love, uh, Rajiv, who's a very funny comedian, uh, all, all of them. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's like, a, it's like a, you know, it created an English, English family, so to speak. And Boni also, uh, Sri Devi's husband. All, all these wonderful people uh, are very generous. I, I guess it's like every project, when you're in it, you don't necessarily know that it's gonna be something or it's gonna be as important as it will become for, for you or others or in your life personally and professionally. I, I, I couldn't say I knew. And regarding my, the, the, this moment of minority complex that I've observed in my life that have sometimes made me feel um, unimportant and, 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 and sabotage my, 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 my past, um, back then it didn't happen during English English because I didn't want to research about who Sri Devi is and uh, what an important and amazing artist she is um, so when I met her on set I didn't know who she was mm -hmm. but I did it on purpose because I knew if I go find out and uh, how what, what an amazing artist she is, and how well known she is. Um, it may become a problem. It may create a distance. It may put me in a position of an admirer and a fan, and 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 and, and it would be not help help not helping not helpful for the for the for the work for the approach for getting to you know Laurent um, uh, uh, meeting Shashi. <laughs> Uh, so, and it worked. And she, I, th I, I, I know that she loved that because when I, when this is also the, 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 the thing that we hear about or could eventually imagine, but it's not easy to be that famous, I tell you. And I, I felt that with DiCaprio too, uh, who is a, a world star since he's 17, I think, 14, 14, his first job as was being the son of Robert De Niro. Well, that's how your career starts, right? <laughs> so it's it's difficult because for them because you don't know if people like you because they like you or because you're DiCaprio or Sri Devi or you're famous or they or they admire your work, what you've done uh, 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 as an artist, but they don't know you in private for real. So th th there's a weird mix, and so it creates. Um, situation where the people or new people that are meeting you are not at ease with you, are not themselves, are not authentic or are scared or are shy or whatever. And it's 
it can be a, a burden. It can be hard uh, because suddenly your connection with other human beings because becomes not simple, not authentic. So there's probably I, I can't speak for them because I'm not I'm not in this situation. But but it feels that you have to create some kind of self defense mechanism where uh, you become, you know, uh, polite and, and kind and etc. But there's a distance. There's a distance, like a mistress, like, uh, like, 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 you know, you know, I'm not sure you're going to like me for who I am, first of all, because you don't know me. And secondly, because what you know from me is just a consequence of my job and not something that necessarily, but it's tricky because when you see an actor, actors, actors like them, you've seen them crying in very vulnerable situation in movies, etc. Of course, you know sides of them that you don't even know from some other people that you really know in your real life. So it's a tricky, tricky, uh, it creates some tricky uh, perception of, of, of who they are or could be or supposed to be or whatever. So we and so on the opposite, when you are so famous and then you meet people who are not aware of, of it and treat you like a woman, a new friend, someone, a man, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. It's fresh air. It's just fresh air. It's just like it even helped them to get free of this role. Yeah, that, that, you know, and 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 that's what happened with Sri Devi. Uh, 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 we didn't have the time with DiCaprio. Uh, I mean, this was this little anecdote of Ridley Scott's seventieth birthday where where we got drunk. There, I felt okay. <laughs> there's something <laughs> playful here. But before that, but with Sri, uh, uh, the fact that, that uh, genuinely I didn't know nothing. She was an Indian actress. Sri Devi, hello, Medhi, nice to meet you. Uh, nice to work with you, etc. That's it. And I saw people on set who treat her like a princess. I was like, hmm, is it a cultural thing? Hmm, she seems to be pretty famous. <laughs> but I would, I wouldn't give it any, any, and it made the approach and the encounter and the friendship uh, faster. Yeah. Really, and and we became friends. Like, and and like she was my new friend. Uh, from India, and we happened to do the same job. And even my daughter re remembers uh, Sri Devi, uh, uh, you know, the way she was with my daughter. I also loved it. And and it just clicked. It just clicked. Like, like when I was behind the camera listening to her, the camera was on her with a big eye. And I was like, you know, I was just, we were together. We were helping each other. I knew, I didn't know because the director told me, I, 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 I heard that the first day she was not knowing anything about me and my work, obviously. <laughs> she was uh, like, you know, watching, like, is he a good actor? Like, oh. she was probably hoping, I hope the guy is good now because, <laughs> If you have a partner that is not um, really generous or... No, and you need to have that, uh, what is the word? You need to have that uh, connection. You need to have that yeah. uh, chemistry, right? Which is so yeah. important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chemistry connection and also, and uh, apart from that, uh, is he, how, is he, how, is, how is he doing, so to speak? Yeah. And then I've heard, I've heard from the director telling me, "Hey, Sri Devi told me uh, she said uh, she likes, she likes, she likes how you work." I like she said, uh, "Oh, he's a good one. He's a good actor or something." I don't remember the exact words, but yeah. I remember the director, who is a dear friend of mine, uh, Gauri, uh, who came to me and said, uh, "Hey, Sri Devi, she uh, appreciates your acting. She, 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 she told me oh, he's a good actor." Which just was like, mm -hmm, "Thank you, uh, <laughs> ego, right? I know, but." <laughs> always a pleasure always a pleasure to receive especially when you're in a working process and all you want is you know to connect and and, and also in a different environment something that you're not familiar in with new york. In new yeah. york yeah no but what i mean is a different environment as in a different um, approach to to cinema i guess or a different outlook a different story a different you know everything so 
uh, for you to, to get that um, uh, appreciation it must be really, really uh, welcoming and heartening, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the whole story is a fairy tale and it's, 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 it's Ridley Scott again. It's Ridley Scott again, because we did this movie, um, Body of Lies, then it was premiered in New York. Uh, so it was 2008. I went to New York to the premiere. It was the first time of my life going to New York and the United States in my uh, mid 30s, uh, early 30s. And, 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 and uh, I remember a friend of mine living there, I was living at his place with his girlfriend, Italian couple, uh, wonderful friends. Um, he brought me to a premiere of the film Gomorra. And, uh, and it was a dinner after. And at the premiere, the film was introduced by Martin Scorsese. Wow. And <laughs> yeah, they, were, they were all there. They were all there. Like uh, uh, John Turturro was there. Uh, 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 Joe Pesci, uh, uh, ah, big, big, uh, a lot of Italo-American huge actors and stars were there. And then there was a dinner after, this round table. I was sitting with some people, not with Turturro and all the, but unfortunately, but <laughs> it doesn't matter. It was a nice evening. And I think we ended up going in some club or something to have a drink. I think it was a Soho or something in New York. And here I am, and I was just coming for this week for the film of Ridley, yeah? That's my only reason I was there, um, or my main reason, so to speak, and discover New York. And uh, on that evening, in that club, I went on the balcony, because back then I was still smoking, to have a cigarette. And, you know, New York, cigarette, evening, blah, blah, blah. Who do I meet? This Indian woman, young woman, uh, uh, super nice, beautiful, uh, really lovely. With two, she was with two other friends. Uh, one was her producer, one of the producer, I think, and the other one was a writer. She was writing, and she was in New York too because she wanted to. She had studied a little bit in New York, but she wanted to come back to New York to write the story down. English, English. Oh wow. <laughs> I yeah, do. This is like character. this is like how do you say the the universe uh, coming oh, yeah. together, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> and, and of course, imagine we're meeting. Hey, what are you doing, Papa? Pa, pa. We exchange. I think it was Facebook back then. Uh, 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 and uh, she said, "What are you here for?" You yeah, know, and of course, <laughs> said, "Well." Um, you know, I'm in the next Ridley Scott movie with, uh, with DiCaprio. So, so for her perception, oh, this guy is, is somewhere in his career. <laughs> would have met her uh, half a year earlier. I would have said, well, I'm doing some films in France. And, you know. But now, I mean, my first impression, <laughs> luckily, thanks to Ridley and, and that timing of my life was uh, uh, probably uh, gave uh, Gowry the impression, oh, Okay, <laughs> we're dealing with someone who's, you know, uh, in, in the first league of, uh, of actors in the world, uh, or at least working with them. So, and then we're exchanging. And then for the next two years, we just had a few mails or a few uh, messages through Facebook, like twice a year, three times. Like, you know, she was this uh, nice encounter Indian young director uh, that I've met in New York, but not, not much more. And then one day she sent me an email and said, hey, uh, I've been writing that script. Remember I told you I was writing it? I'm talking two or three years after, I don't remember. Two and a half, I think. Two and a half years later, I received this email and in the attachment, the script saying, hi, Mary, uh, there's a part in this uh, story and uh, I was thinking of you and probably maybe the fact that we encountered in New York and this guy lives in New York, this French guy, maybe she was, he maybe he was not French at the beginning and maybe she made him French because we met, I don't know, I, should, I could ask her actually, but or she saw that as a sign or whatever, but how comes that two and a half years later, 
she remembers our encore enough to propose me, not casting, not let's, let's, let's try, but I would like you to be that part. And it's not a small part, it's a lead part with Sri Devi and it's her comeback. I don't know all of that, but it's, all, it's a lead without casting. So it's a real offer. But, and, but I wonder, because has she seen anything from me? Does she know how I act? Will she, does she like it? Or it's just intuitive intuition in contour and whatsoever. Like Rhea, two and a half years, someone you met with a small cigarette is offering you a lead part in a movie shooting in New York. So I read that, but I thought she just wants my opinion. They don't have the money. They're gonna seek for the money. Maybe she needs my go, uh, or maybe she maybe she wants a casting. Like she, next thing she's gonna ask is me to meet Sri Devi. That very common when you have especially romantic comedies where you want the two actors to meet and work some scenes out. You should it. You can even try different actors if you have your lead already, like Sri Devi, and see which guy works. But, you know, you do. It's it's common to to check the chemistry. No, it's an offer. But I, but minority complex. I think ah. Uh, not gonna happen like nice story i like the script but they're in a in financial process they don't have the money etc and then next i say yeah i like it i like script. i, I mean I'm, I'm i'm interested too and i say okay look we are we are we, we went from bombay to london because in london we have to meet some people but on the way back i mean they, they, they were supposed to go directly to mumbai yeah on the way back if you want we can stop to berlin because i, I live in berlin till now still uh, and I'm like, wait a minute. I mean, they could have asked me to take a, a low cost flight and come to uh, uh, UK to yeah. no, 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 no. She and her husband, Balki, who's producer and director, decided to take a plane. I mean, I felt like Johnny Depp. <laughs> you know, this, di this director from, from India uh, is supposed to fly back to Mumbai. Take a ticket and come to, you know, to meet me in Berlin. So I proposed them to meet in a Sicilian organic restaurant that a friend of mine, Cooker Han, used to have, and uh, you used to work in. And then I right there and I sit and I meet them. And, you know, I think Balki as a director wanted also to, you know, to, to see the guy to, <laughs> and to, um, and um, I was, in a good place in my life, joyful, I made them laugh, we had a fantastic lunch, of course I invited them, I mean, I, I felt a little bit, a bit like, come on, I mean, guys, you've paid a fucking tickets to, 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 to see me, <laughs> and, and, um, and then I'm like, okay, so in which stage of the finance are you, when, when, she said, oh, we got the money, we're shooting in two months. Wow. Like, okay. <laughs> wow. My jaw just like, so oh, I think wow. they did <laughs> all the prep, they did everything, um, and then came to you with a concrete proposal and offer. Yeah. This is yeah. very professional, and which I think um, is, is oh my God. I'm impressed. Yeah. Wow. And this, um, for, sorry, for, forgive me for repeating it, from an encounter two and a half years ago, smoking a cigarette on the balcony in some. Uh, uh, bar in uh, in New York. He was like, wait a minute, and they were like, are you available? Like, will you be, you know, available? And we're starting shooting. I think we shot September October, twenty eleven, and uh, right before that, I had a French movie where we had uh, the, the ending of the shooting was in Hong Kong, so we needed to do a straight Hong Kong. Uh, uh, New, York. Uh, New York. That's where I felt, hey my God, what's going on with my car? Yeah, I'm shooting in Hong Kong and I'm going to New York. <laughs> so I felt like, like my ego was really like, I'm important. <laughs> that's, that's the ego shit. Anyway, and, uh, but it felt just nice. And, uh, I remember, by the way, I started um, a diary in Hong Kong, man, especially for my daughter. So I highly recommend fathers and mothers. Uh, I mean, what do you mean highly recommend? I think it's a lovely idea. I, I started to 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 uh, a, a diary, a travel diary. So every time I go travel and I'm not with my daughter, I, 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 I describe her 
the place and what I've done and thinking of her or her growing because when I started she was a three and then a year later she's four and then now she's 12 so even my way of of communicating to yeah. her changes yeah. yeah and this is something uh, I would like her to have uh, as a memory of her dad traveling around the planet and talking to her like basically I'm talking to her yeah. but different ages and it started in Hong Kong back then. It's a little anecdote, but I'm, 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 I'm proud of, of this idea because I think it's, it's, it's lovely. Even me, when I get back into it, I uh, could even, uh, you know, I moved. So, and it started then, it just, just came back into my mind. And then here I am in New York. Um, I've, I didn't want to stay in a hotel. I've asked for an apartment so I could cook. And also, <laughs> I told all my buddies, guys, I got an apartment in New York for two months. There's a, there's a guest room. Who want to come? Should come. And I had a lot of busy Italy, France. Because, because New York is expensive. So yeah. when you tell your friends, guy, make sure you get your ticket. I take care about the food. And you don't fucking pay for any uh, 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 hotel or anything. That was also gorgeous. But I felt like it was like a dream, a, a, a childhood dream. I was shooting in New York with those yellow caps. I've, I mean, you know, Coppola, Woody Allen, Casavetes. I mean, Jim, I mean, Jamush, uh, New York, you know. New York was part of our life, uh, my life since I was a child in, in so It was like going on a planet I knew, but I've never been physically before. So I've, I had a lot of deja vu but in, not in the three-dimensional world, déjà vu in, in films. So it, it, it's like, you know, but you don't know. And now you smell and now you, it's, that was very magical. And that's thanks to Gowry, thanks to English for English too. And then uh, the rest is just, uh, the rest is history, so to speak. And my big regret is that I couldn't make it to be there at the premiere in Mumbai. I've, I was shooting a comedy in France, and months later, uh, earlier, like two months before, I said, in that specific time, keep me off, keep me free. I can't shoot. Give me at least four days, three days, and I'm going back. I want to be there, Bollywood, Mumbai, Sri, you know, red carpet, meeting all these legends and, and a few of them that I really admire. Um, and you know, it's it's like this is really Alice in Wonderland uh, having the greatest party of all time, for you know, uh, and uh, and the, the, the first assistant director. I'm trying to not feel any resentment, but I was like, and she ignored my request. She didn't even know because you know, first assistant director are organizing the shooting. Of course, producers and, and directors have a, have an eye on it. Um for some reason they didn't make it to 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 have me free and uh, I remember being on the phone with all of them and so that that's so <clears throat> that's English English. Have you been have you been made an offer um for any other films in India? No. No, and I didn't took the opportunity because because if I had if I had come to the premiere, yeah. then I would yeah. realize not only intellectually or from reading something online, but how huge Sri Devi is. And, um, and this film, uh, what this film means also, it's her comeback. And, um, and, and, and as a consequence of that, how important my part uh, was uh, in this beautiful movie with her uh, would have mean. I, I didn't know. I didn't know. I had no, no idea. And one of my, I mean, I don't believe in regret. It doesn't change, change anything. But back then, I didn't realize that I could have really started something in India. I call it minority complex, call it ignorance. I didn't know that uh, it could have been the beginning of a career in India added to the rest of what I'm doing, that, that I seriously could have done something uh, from 2012, 13, etc. Just, you know, choose a good one. Be, even as a foreigner, you know, there was something, there was something that could have been created from, from, from there. And call it karma, call it, you know, that's, that's how my life is in this life. 
it wasn't meant to happen for some reason that I don't uh, necessarily yeah, have, have to understand. <laughs> but that's I that's know, fine. but it, it hasn't happened now. It may happen because your career is still very much there. And well, I'm not there. <laughs> so everything can happen hey, you know to the life yeah no absolutely so i mean i think with hollywood with indian cinema i don't like the word bollywood so with hindi cinema um i think there's it's all about opportunity timing um perseverance and of course luck all of that put together um i believe and belief, yeah. yeah, and, yeah. Uh, faith, and faith, faith in you, in your, in your, in your path, in your yeah. work, in yeah. yourself, in your abilities. Yeah, that's that that attracts um, opportunities in, in, in yeah. every field. Yeah, no, I, field. yeah, I completely agree with that. And in fact, I should have started with faith, um, mm. and then you know uh, move, and it, it's all interconnected. So yeah, no, I even I mean, think that. Faith, even seeing that faith, believe, uh, can provoke uh, um, opportunities, like as, as if we were co-writers of our future and our destiny. There are things you can't have any influence on and, and, and that are meant to happen or call it karma. Uh, but I think um, there's also a huge part where if you believe in something, it's, it's, like, it's like you connect with that possibility of, uh, on, a, on, a, on an energetical vibration and frequencies. It's proven uh, if your brain just connect with that possibility. And if you start to develop from the heart, uh, 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 um, the the, the 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 emotion that is linked to it means you feel it's happening like when you for example if you're expecting uh, an answer for a job or you had a job interview and uh, and you're waiting or you had an exam i mean an exam is a bit maybe a bit different but yeah let's say you're waiting for an answer if you connect with the, 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 the possibility that it could be a positive answer, like you got the job, you, you promoted, you got the, your exam, you got the part, whatsoever. If you just connect with that possibility uh, from a brain point of view, with that frequency, you know, yeah, why not? Could work, could work. And if you then visualize and feel the emotion, like you see yourself on set, you see yourself doing the job, you, and, and it starts to create a positive emotion that you would have if you would get the job of, of the promotion or etc. Then it's it's been said that the chances for it to happen are much bigger. Yeah. And this is not, and this is like we're clo pretty close to to I think scientifically. For, for to, 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 to be for it to be proven and and I'm and I'm at least from my perspective I'm, I'm a strong believer uh, of that that and that's where faith uh, believing in you in your life in your destiny will definitely a, 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 a much better job <laughs> for your future than if you do the opposite which is doubting fearing uh, being scared etc so it's a it's not always easy. Uh, sometimes fear take over or minority complex. Man, I, no, I'm not, it's not going to work. No, no, I'm not worth it. Oh no, I don't deserve it. Or this kind of shit. But it's 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 really worth it to work on your mind to to train your mind of of, of being more positive yeah. and creating yeah. those opportunities. Yeah, and uh, yeah. meditation. I think meditation is a for for, for my personal experience and vipassana meditation in my case uh, by the way my relationship to india also the second time i went there uh, was to do a meditation retreat and gauri did it also the director vipassana so i think meditation is for my experience the most efficient um, technique 
because it's not a religion, it's not a sect, it's just a technique. No, it's just it's of how to train the mind, mind. Yeah, yeah. To to get more relaxed and more, more positive, more, you know, to, to, and um, so when we say faith in our destiny, in ourselves, and in our skills and abilities, I think the the the, the, the way to to train the mind to become a good friend and not a cynical uh, judge <laughs> uh, or, a, or a tough judge, uh, this little voice in our heads. Um, for me, meditation is the is, is, is yeah the greatest school I could mm -hmm. find. Yeah, yeah, so it's it's basically helped you, enabled you to. You know, to, to work on my minority <laughs> complex and on the self-destructive sides that one may have, and maybe artists more than other, but I don't know if I'm even right. But yeah, to work on my self-destructive uh, sides that it's when you become your, your worst enemy uh, rather than your best friend. And uh, yeah, you know, the choice on, on paper in theory is quite easy to do. But sometimes we are not our best friends. And um, so once you've been through certain moments like that and you stop to, say, to see yourself as a victim of it, means powerless. And uh, what do victims expect? Two things, a savior or, or um, what do you call it, torture? Like someone who's going to torture you? Yeah, yeah. So it puts you in this ch young child position where you think that something from outside will rather save you or make it harder. Or, 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 and that's um, not the truth. The truth is that there is not only these two possibilities. You could save yourself. You could try to work on something to get out of this victimization uh, uh, thing. Or, and 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 um, and see uh, and accept this weird habit of self 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 destruction minority comes in all this your 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 the sides you like you don't like or you have difficulty to appreciate to accept that they are there that make they make us human and then find for yourself for your own on your own path technique yeah. to become a better friend to yourself and that's. Uh, that became even more important than success, money, and acting, because you can be successful, rich, and 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 and, and trapped in a depression, and and think you're not worth it living, you know, being happy or shit like that. So that's probably when uh, I started to have a little less of self sabotage and minority, minority, minority complex when I started to work on it and realized that's more important than any uh, other form of success. Even if I don't uh, condemn uh, professional success or success or fame or money at all, uh, and they, but, but um, they are not replacing, uh, they, they don't have the, the, the power to replace uh, the relationship you have to yourself and therefore to life and for you to learn and uh, how to become a good friend to yourself. <laughs> I think that's where it, yeah, that's when you're at peace with yourself, when you have that understanding about yourself um, and you're able to sort of, you know, separate the two and then work towards um, positivity. Um, that's, that's like, it takes time, especially if, You've had a different mindset in the past, but I think it's a beautiful journey. And um, I can see that you've, um, you know, listening to you for I don't know how long it's been that <laughs> we've been talking, but <laughs> uh, listening to Hour you. And a half, maybe. Oh, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> and I'm, I, I will be very um, reluctant to edit uh, any of this conversation because I think it's, it's been so um, diverse. It's been, I mean, the focus has not really been cinema, although that's, um, it, that's your, uh, um, your strength or that's what you do but i think the focus has also been 
who you are, um, from where it all began to the entire journey of where you are at with yourself now. And I think that to me has been far more meaningful um, a conversation as compared to talking about cinema and what you enjoy about acting and how, you know, mm. all of that I think is, is secondary. I think you as a person, which is what Melting Pot, um, that's, that's what Melting Pot and I connect with is the journey of the person. And I, I, I can't tell you how much I have enjoyed the fact that, and um, I'm happy that, you know, you were able to share that, that journey. And, and a lot of, it was very deep as well. And, you know, and I think, and I'm sorry if I, not that I directed it, but maybe I did. <laughs> and, <laughs> But I don't regret it because I think it's it's just been um, a wonderful conversation with you, Mehdi. Seriously. Likewise, likewise, likewise. I didn't know where it would go and I had only a few hours of sleep, but um, yeah. I have no, I have no common or self-reflection about what we said. It's just... In, just it's just sharing. It's just sharing different yeah. point of views and experiences. Yeah, no, absolutely, and and I think that's what that's what is enriching, you know. And that's what I mean. People who know you as an actor um, will, who, and who will listen to it or watch um, the the podcast on YouTube will see a, a such a different humane side of you, um, which I think. Um, in my opinion, I think nothing is more important than that. So thank you once again. I hope you, you uh, too. <laughs> continue with your writing and, you know, we're able yeah, to too. do share with, with me your journey on, on, as far as your writing goes and, and also... Uh, you know, hopefully one day um, when I'm in Spain, I can, you know, France is just, um, Berlin is just next door. And, and yeah. I'd, I'd love to to be actually be able to meet you in person as well, because um, that's what I used to do before the pandemic. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and, you know, I do stay connected and it's just... And again, thank you for, for sharing. Thank you too for the invitation. <laughs> you have a wonderful day. And I you too. Thank you. you too. I have not much of the day left now because it's evening for me. <laughs> but ah, what time is it right now for it's, you? It's um, 6 p.m. Ah, it's okay. it's okay. Yeah, so it's not too bad. I still have. Yeah, a few can you go out? Can you, are you? I mean, can you get out and enjoy a bit of the nature there? Oh, absolutely. Yeah? Singapore is COVID-free. Um, oh. Yep, and um, life is back to normal. Of course, there are restrictions, which you know, I'm I'm happy that there are because I mean, you have to always wear a mask, and you need to wherever you are, you need to check in and check out so that you know, they're able to trace, uh, they have an app called Trace Together. And, and I think Singapore has handled the pandemic in such a clinical and, you know, in such a focused way that we, for a long time now, we, I mean, okay, you can't be more than a group of X number of people, restaurants mm -hmm. close at 10.30 p.m., the bars are not open, but that's okay. We can go for walks. We can go out for dinners. We you can go shopping. Can you swim? How is the how is the ocean there? Is it nice beaches? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's. I mean, there's okay. Singapore being a small country, um, there are uh, yeah, there are beaches. But you have nature like like uh, if I, I know, mountain jungle and, and uh, jungle in fact if I could show you uh, my house is uh, literally opposite a jungle oh and so you have the sounds of the jungle night and thing like that um, you hear the, when it rains it? yeah when it rains you do hear 
um, it's tropical and you have to understand. Yeah, I remember Hong Kong, yeah. On the equator. I mean, we are on the equator. And uh, so, so very humid too, huh? Very, very. Yeah, I remember in Hong Kong when I came out of the plane and I felt like boom, a yeah. wall of humidity and No, and but warmth. at least Hong Kong has, um, has seasons. Singapore has no seasons. So no? No, it's, yeah. it's hot, hotter, hottest, and it's humid, and it rains a lot, but um, it's very green. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, very, very green. And of course, you you may, you know, and I think it's nice to, I'm not a big fan of the weather, but other than that, you're so close to nature, and it's, you know, there's hardly any pollution, um, you are able to, uh, you're, you're able to go for treks, you're able to do all of that. And when it's not, I mean, now it's unusual times, but otherwise you can very easily just get onto a plane in two hours. You're in Bali, in Cambodia, and I mean, just... Ah, of course, uh, of course, of course, region. of course, yes. Yeah, okay. so it's, it's a hub and it's very modern. Um, very futuristic buildings. Um, yeah, so you should, you should visit. You should visit. Yeah, maybe. It's not, to be very honest, not on the top of the list of the destinations I want to discover yeah. right now. But I have neighbors who live in Berlin uh, who lived there for many years and uh, in, we had one or two dinners with them. But I, I'll, I'll, uh, makes me curious. I want to ask more so to them about Singapore. Yeah, do stuff. that, do that because it's yeah. I mean, it's worth a, a, a visit for sure. I can mm. I can say that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right Good then. Good to yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you okay. know the little red dot yeah. you can circle it now. <laughs> As I mean, since, since this discussion, uh, uh, <laughs> Singapore became. Definitely more real than it was before. <laughs> yeah. Before it was just a name and a place somewhere on the planet. But now, yeah. yeah. So yeah. thanks for that. You're welcome. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I know a little bit more about Singapore now. <laughs> okay. Uh, I wish you all the best, health, and uh, to enjoy um, uh, life as Thank much as possible. Thank you so much. And it's, uh, I wish you. Fast. It's precious, and it's precious. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much, Mambi. Bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 For more weekly chats, do listen to Melting Pot on Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. Follow us on YouTube and on Instagram at Podcast Melting Pot. Until the next episode, this is Pyle signing off.